Hello and welcome to another episode of the Big Bash Show for the 2011-2012 KFC T20 Big Bash League season. My name is Shura Taft and on this show, of course, we're going to talk about all things to do with the Big Bash and give you some tips and hints for your fantasy league team as well. And as usual, my partner in crime along the way from the age cricket writer Jesse Hogan. Welcome to the show Hello, again. mate. Now, it's been another big week of matches, including a Melbourne team finally getting their campaign off and running. If they hadn't have beat, if the Renegades hadn't have beaten the Thunder, you would have thought it would be all over for them in terms of qualifying for the finals. You know, until probably the last over, it looked yes. like that was, a, you know, that was the way they were going to go, that their high-risk, high-reward strategy of bowlers wouldn't work. But yeah, they came out of it with a victory, and now if they manage to snare one in the new year too, and if the Stars do as well, it all shapes up for a pretty decent derby on January 7th. But so far in the last round of matches, some pretty big results, some great batting, some great uh, bowling. But obviously the fielding's been a highlight as well. Oh, some of the fielding's just been incredible. I think particularly the Sydney Sixers and Melbourne Stars game the other day. You know, the first example was Brett Lee taking that amazing catch in the outfield. But the thing that really sort of for me, I thought it was the most amazing was Dwayne Bravo, yeah. that boundary line save. <laughs> and it's funny, you look on the scorecard, didn't get a catch for it. Only thing, I think he saved four runs because it was heading for six and they got a two out of it. But the ex athleticism of him then was just extraordinary and I think it's, I can't really think of anything that rivals that and a lot of the good things I've seen on the boundary. Well, we're going to get to a bit later with who's hot and who's not about the players, but some players mm. have lifted after having poor performances. At the moment, though, it's the Hobart Hurricanes who are on top of the ladder and looking fantastic. Oh, the absolute pace setters. Though, you know, they looked in trouble, you know, even from the first game, scoring about 140-odd against Perth. But every game, their bowling lineup's been carrying them through. They've... You know, so disciplined, so hard to get away. And even their top order batting's been really resolute as well. Phil Jakes has been a good import. Jonathan Wells is, you know, hasn't got a big name and is doing okay, but they're all being particularly being led by Travis Burr, who I think so far averaging about 50 at a strike rate of 150. And if he keeps this form up, you'd expect a probably a national T20 call or recall wouldn't be out of the question. Well, all smiles at the moment down in the Apple Isle, but it is all the work to do for the Brisbane Heat with Matthew Hayden. They're on the bottom of the ladder and uh, hopefully they can get a win up in round four. All right, who's hot and who's not? That is the question we ask each week to do with the KFC Big Bash Fantasy League game, which you can play at the Big Bash website. And of course, there have been some huge performances, Jesse, over the first few weeks. And of course, some players have lifted after you've given a bit of a canning. <laughs> of course, Always Sean Tate, <laughs> yeah. he was uh, not hot for a couple of weeks in a row. But at the moment, David Hussey, um, you know, he's had a couple of big performances. David doherty has been bowling well. So let's ask the question, who is hot at the moment? Well, I guess the first few weeks, if you look back here, it's really been dominated by the batsmen in this category. But this week, I think bowlers have been doing most of the jobs. I guess the batsmen that have been doing well, Travis Burt, as I mentioned before, has had a fantastic time. David Hussey's done everything this tournament so far, except get a big score. <laughs> Um, but in terms of the bowlers, I thought one of the big efforts this week was Dirk Nannis, dropped for the last week's yeah. game, coming up bowling against Chris Gale. And to finish with none for 10 from four overs, wicketless, but it was just an extraordinary performance and was really a key reason why the Renegades got so close. But in terms of bowling efforts, I don't think you can really go past Xavier Dowdy's four for 17. Like he's virtually, I think he's peerless, he's a limited overs spinner in Australia. Deservedly, he's the first choice in the one day. He's probably should get a go in the T20s as well, and that was just really an amazing performance. And probably unlucky to miss out there as well. Shahid Afridi mm. with a bad back, with a bad back, I should say, <laughs> not a bad bracken, uh, getting three <laughs> wickets for himself. Now, who is not hot at the moment? Who is not performing up to their capabilities? You think? Oh, uh, you think probably team-wise. Uh, I guess the obvious one is what we mentioned before, the Brisbane Heat. I was a bit worried at the start that once they lost Ben Cutting, that that would really hurt their pay stocks. And just their batting too, they haven't really had anyone that can kick on. I think the real big disappointment for them has been Chris Lynn. I had him pegged at the start of the year as an you know, Australian player very soon, but he can't get a run at the moment. Um, Hayden's doing okay without sort of really kicking on. Peter Forrest is doing okay, but they just don't really have anyone spearheading him forward with the bat like they need to. And which is unfortunate because I'd heard really good things about the way the Brisbane Heat were going off the field up there, really organised very well, very, very good crowds. But yeah, now none and three, they're virtually, you know, no, no hosting chances for a final and looks unlikely to even get there now. So at the moment, it's not the Brisbane Heat, it's the Brisbane Tepid, let's say. <laughs> yes. so they've got a lift in the next few rounds for sure. Now that Melbourne's won their first game as well. Now, if you want to play the Fantasy League game, remember you can go to the Big Bash website. You can share in over $20,000 in prizes. And each week, the best scoring team will win 500 bucks. How's your team going? Uh, let's just, what, next, next topic, please. <laughs> Now, each week on the show, we like to get you guys, the fans at home, involved and uh, ask 
Jesse Hogan, our resident expert, the curly questions. And of course, you can do that by getting on Twitter and using the hashtag Big Bash Show. Now, this week we've got a couple of good ones for you, Jesse. The first one is from at Montero123, that's Nathan Montero, who says, What are your thoughts on at stars BBL skipper Cameron White with the bat this series in just three matches? He's made just six runs. It really is a massive disappointment, and for me, like that's something that's been baffling me for a while. Cameron White's sort of form with the bat, and I actually, I think the last time I really have seen the Cameron White that I've sort of known and got used to was was about 15 months ago in a one day or in uh, in India in a place called Vizag when he got about 89 or 49 to win the game, played superbly. But since then, he's just looked too tentative with the bat, and even when he tries to hit out, he hasn't really sort of been extending extending himself, and you've had been caught on the boundary. He just looks really tentative and I can't really understand why. I think the best thing for him is actually if he probably put more responsibility on himself and moved to three. George Bailey has done okay there for the Stars but hasn't really excelled. So I think it would really work perfectly if maybe they swap positions, put Cameron White to number three, George Bailey to five, and in between them the real informed David Hussey at four. Certainly some Victorians waiting to see Cameron White hit some sixes in this <laughs> competition. All right, the next tweet comes from at Alastair Murphy 8 who says, what are the chances of a Melbourne derby in the finals? What do you reckon about that? Uh, first week, I think there's virtually none. I can't see any way that both Melbourne teams will be able to um, probably, you know, I wouldn't see the Renegades being able to get into the second spot to host a final and the Stars finishing third. So I really, the only way I can see there being a Melbourne derby in the final is if it is the final, that if uh, both teams manage to sort of get in there as a lower ranked opponent, three and four, and you know, under the rules there, you can finish three and four, and if you get to the final then, then you still qualify for the Champions League. So. It's probably unlikely at this stage, but you know the next week is going to be really crucial because both have uh, games at home and then they have the derby on January 7. All right, well, we'll wait and see and see how the Melbourne teams go. Of course, there's a lot of support down here in Melbourne. They want to see at least one <laughs> Melbourne team in the finals. Now, if you want to ask a question to our expert, Jesse Hogan, can be anything at all, jump on Twitter and make sure you use the hashtag, uh, hashtag Big Bash Show. All right, that's it for another episode of The Big Bash Show. As usual, Jesse Hogan, thank you for joining us. Pleasure, thanks, And man. Happy New Year's <laughs> to you. And if, don't forget, you guys get down to the games. The crowds have been fantastic. The next game you can get involved in is the Hobart Hurricanes taking on the Sydney Thunder. That's at Blundstone Arena at January 1. No, you don't have to wear Blundstones to the game, though. And uh, the second one, Melbourne Renegades taking on the Sydney Sixers at the Dockland Stadium January 2. Remember Brisbane Heat taking on the Adelaide Strikers at the Gabba. The Heat have to get off and running. That's on Jan 3. And then the Stars taking on the Perth Scorchers at the MCG January 4. Where better place to watch the cricket than at the MCG, of course. And the Test match coming up as well. It's a big, uh, big couple of weeks of cricket. Jesse Hogan? It's been a big few past weeks, big few weeks coming up as well. And don't forget, if you want to ask him a question at all, get on Twitter. Use the hashtag BigBashShow and ask him some questions. We'll try and answer them in the coming weeks. And remember to get a fantasy team going as well so you can try and win $500 each week. Until then, though, make sure you have a very safe and happy New Year's, and we'll see you in 2012.